Hello friends, happy Friday, and welcome to another episode of Quandries and Sundries, the show where we cover the science and history news of the day to hopefully expand your knowledge, or at least give you a break from all the craziness of today's hustle and bustle. I hope you're all doing well today. To make up for the lack of an episode yesterday, we'll be doing a double episode today, two stories for the price of one. I hope you enjoy. But before we get into this, if you're listening on YouTube, I'd really appreciate it if you give this video a like, a comment, and if you're new to my content, consider subscribing. Or if you're listening to this on Spotify or the audio platform of your choice, consider following. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. So sit right back, get comfortable, and let us get right into it. Let us hop into the first story. I thought we'd end this week on an odd discovery that made me think a lot about our evolutionary path as humans and primates. It made me laugh at the same time just as much. Let us talk about dinosaurs, our good old prehistoric friends who roamed and dominated this planet for over 120 million years. They shaped the ecosystem and its wildlife with their actions and lifestyles. In a previous episode, I talked about how their existence kept flowering plants from thriving and evolving. But would you believe me if I told you that dinosaurs had opposable thumbs, specifically a newly discovered pterosaur? One, I would laugh. Two, I would try and fail to imagine that. And three, I would call you crazy. But it's surprisingly true. Before we get into it, I would first like to talk about what a pterosaur is. In the heyday of the dinosaurs, one could divide them into three main categories based on their habitat. First and foremost, we had the land walkers, aka the long necks and the raptors. In the oceans, we had the plesiosaurs and the mosasaurus. Think of them as a mix between dinosaurs and either sharks or whales. And finally, the third category, the pterosaurs, the winged dinosaurs that ruled the sky, and a time where birds did not exist. They are currently the earliest recorded flying animals on this planet, existing from 228 to 66 million years, as it would not be till around 66 million years ago after the Great Cretaceous Extinction till birds came onto the scene. When thinking of pterosaurs, imagine a mix between hawks and crocodiles. A scary thought. The biggest recorded pterosaur we ever found was Quetzalcoatlus. The biggest we have discovered had a wingspan of over 40 feet or 13 meters, bigger than the wingspan of an average fighter jet. This new study I am talking about today shines new light on possible evolutionary traits for these winged reptiles. Let me first talk about our prehistoric primate ancestors. From what we currently know, our ancestors evolved from the same ancestor as all mammals we share this planet with today. These creatures were shrew-like rats that scurried beneath the feet of dinosaurs called the Thurians. The earliest we have discovered dates back to 161 million years ago and upon the dinosaur's extinction, the Etherians began to evolve, prosper, and populate, eventually leading to millions of branches in its tree that have resulted in the mammals we know today, like bears, whales, monkeys, mice, you name it. The tree is large, fascinating, and extensive. I would highly suggest looking it up. The earliest primates did not exist, however, until 55 million years ago. And according to our discoveries that we know of, our ancient ancestors, it is believed that the opposable thumb only evolved and became a common trait in all primates around 2 to 3 million years ago, during the early Stone Age, when we started using tools, forming early close-knit groups, and discovered fire. But yet, we have discovered what scientists are calling the monkey dactyl, a pterosaur that has been dated to 160 million years ago with opposable thumbs, one on each hand. According to all the fossils we have found before this discovery, dinosaurs, whether land or pterosaurs, had three-toed hands and feet. In the case of pterosaurs, imagine bats. They had wings with three claws on the end, which they used to walk on when they were not airborne. But yet we have found one that had a thumb that was opposable, allowing them to grab prey and even climb trees. Our monkey reptile friend was a small pterosaur, with a wingspan around 85 centimeters or 0.85 meters, the smallest pterosaur we have found on record, smaller than an average hawk. This brings into question 
if monkey dactyl is a long lost ancestor of us humans, maybe even a long lost ancestor to the Aetherians. But we have no link between Aetherians and dinosaurs, but maybe the existence of monkey dactyl might lead us to a link. They lived around the same time, and maybe monkey dactyl even hunted Aetherians, but could they have had the same ancestor millions of years before? It could be possible because all life on this planet came from the ocean, from single-celled creatures, during the Paleozoic period, 430 million years ago, when fish grew legs and evolved to live on land. This new discovery of monkey dactyl could help shed light, finally, on getting closer to finding a link between our earliest ancestors and that first fish that crawled out of the water. I'm excited to see what we find next, and if we can finally build a full evolutionary tree of life in the near future we might be one step closer to finding our true ancestors. Before we end, let us hop forward into the future, about 15 million years, to the end of the last ice age, a time ruled by mammoths, saber-toothed tigers, woolly rhinos, and early primates. But we are here to talk about wolves. The gray wolves we'll be talking about today inhabit the Yukon, a 186 square mile or 482 square kilometer territory between the British Columbia and Alaska. Gray wolves have roamed these lands for over 11,000 years. In the 20th century, they are known for feasting on caribou and moose, but according to prehistoric discoveries, they used to feast on prehistoric horses in the Pleistocene era. This era lasted 2.5 million years, and its ending marked a major extinction event for many prehistoric mammals, such as woolly rhinos and woolly mammoths. It signaled an end to the last ice age and brought the world to its current climate state before global warming. In this era, the world was covered in ice, and because many creatures were not used to the change between the cold and the heat, if you lived in an area below the equator and you could not evolve to handle it, your extinction was guaranteed, and so were many species. This was known as the Pleistocene extinction, also resulting in the gray wolves to evolve their diets to better fit the climate and marked a crucial moment in prehistoric human history. Humans have been migrating a lot during the Ice Age, but after the melting of the Great Ice Bridge, which was a glacier that connected modern-day Russia to Alaska, it put a stop to humans' migration patterns, eventually leading to more civilized societies once they settled down in one place. Although it would not be for another 7,000 years, to the first civilization, the civilization of Mesopotamia came to be. Now here's a fun fact. Did you know mammoths did not die out during the Ice Age? Our previous discoveries put their extinction around 11,000 years ago, around the time of the Ice Age, but some managed to survive the melting. And thanks to recent studies, we have found out that mammoths actually managed to live for another 7,000 years on a little island off the coast of Siberia called Wrangell Island. Because of flooding and melting, they became trapped on the island, and over the next 7,000 years, their genetic diversity became so bad that they eventually were not able to survive. Now what is genetic diversity, and why did it lead to their downfall? Well, every living thing on the planet is related. We may be millions or billions of generations and years apart, but we are related. We all share the same building blocks in our DNA. As species evolve and breed, they pass on their DNA and the adaptions they have evolved with and garnered through their experiences. But because the population is so big, there is not any breeding within families or with relatives. Sometimes there are, but that's a different story. But when two animals that are related breed, there is a chance that their DNA can become unstable and result in mutations and health problems. And if interbreeding continues through the generations, their DNA will get worse and worse and deteriorate, eventually leading to not being able to pass on their genes. And that is what happened to the woolly mammoths on Wrangell Island. They were not able to evolve to survive the island, and their population and breeding pool got smaller and smaller until they wiped their own selves out because of genetic deformities, a.k.a. a lack of genetic diversity. It's interesting to think about how during the reign of the civilization of Mesopotamia, there was a place on this planet where mammoths roamed free and wild. They may not have been in good health, but still, a chance to see them would be amazing and wondrous. Now back to wolves. I did not have much to talk about regarding them, but this gave me the perfect opportunity to talk about the last ice age and its impact on our evolutionary history. I hope you enjoyed. Well, that is all I got for today. Before I go, 
I would like to thank everyone for the feedback on last week's change. I will be going forward with this new format and hope you will look forward to what I release next. I would like to thank you again for joining me for another episode. Do not forget to share this podcast to all those in your life who could use a scientific moment in theirs. I wish you goodbye, my friends. I hope you never forget to grow and never stop searching for knowledge. And always trust your scientific nose. I hope you all join me tomorrow for another episode of Quandaries and Sundries. Stay safe, stay sound, stay healthy, always question your logic and reality. Do not be afraid to follow the truth, and do not forget to stay informed. This is Van Masterson, signing off.